All right, welcome back everybody to another week of Project Xbot updates. Uh, first big thing, this guy's done. Uh, in one week we have turned it on, we have added all the structure that you see here, and now we have a computer controlled plasma cutter that cuts sheets up to half inch thick, uh, four foot by eight foot, uh, in a 100% duty cycle capacity. So we, are, we have our fabrication under control for the legs. Um, the other major things we've been working on this week is, one, we took a step back in controls and we put a lot of work into making simulations that will inform our control system better instead of just trying to continue to work with the real leg, which is a little bit dangerous and a lot time consuming. Um, on top of that, we continue to work on the, the hydraulic power unit and this week we're going to actually take you through the different components of the hydraulic power unit so that you get a feel for what it looks like in full. This is our hydraulic power unit. We've been working on it for the past couple months. Uh, we want to take a second to actually walk you guys through all the parts that are on this, because we've received all the parts, they're starting to get hooked up, and uh, right now would be a good time to actually show you guys what we're working on. So let's start with the first thing you need in a hydraulic system, which is hydraulic oil. Right? So this is our reservoir. Uh, this has about 25 gallons of hydraulic oil in it. Um, its job is simply to uh, baffle the oil that's coming in from the robot and make sure that it's not turbulent when it goes to feed the pumps. Alright, so our reservoir's job is to get clean oil to our pumps, right? So the way it does that is, if you look here, there's this giant port that we welded on. Last week we were welding on this port, uh, cutting out the old one and cleaning it. Uh, so the port goes to this piece, which is buried inside the reservoir. It's a suction strainer. So it cleans the hydraulic fluid before it ever gets to the pump. This giant fitting then comes down and sends fluid all the way back to our hydraulic pump system. Let's go check that out. Okay. This is our hydraulic pump system. It gets fed from the reservoir. Uh, we've upgraded it as a result of the performance upgrade that we achieved on Kickstarter. So this is basically the largest pump we can attach to this engine using the same shaft that we had before. So you'll notice it's actually two pumps. Gear pumps don't get larger than a certain size, so if you need more flow from a given gear pump, they'll just give you more, right? So this is actually one pump and then a smaller secondary pump. Uh, in total, it's about 5.2 cubic inches per revolution in size. So, these pumps pressurize the hydraulic fluid and send it into the rest of the robot. However, they do it by continuously providing flow. So if the robot's not moving, they actually have to push all of their fluid through a relief valve and push it back to the reservoir that we just saw. Um, that means that if we're standing still, we're just burning all of the power in the engine and turning it into heat. 
which is pretty bad. It means that we have about 70 horsepower worth of hydraulic power. We would turn that entirely into heat standing still, which means that we'd probably catch fire after about five minutes if we didn't ha do anything about it. So what we're doing is attacking that problem in a couple different ways. One is we're adding the ability to turn our gear pumps off. So because we have two, we have these valves uh, that will allow us to just divert flow from, instead of the rest of the robot, we'll just send it back to the heat exchanger, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, so basically we'll have a turtle speed of just this tiny pump, a medium speed of just the large pump, and then a fast speed of both pumps working together. So our pumps supply this tree of parts. So what this is, these two guys right here are check valves. Uh, they're one-way valves, which means that pumps can only push fluid in through this direction. Uh, because we have two pumps, we need this system to prevent the pumps from pumping into each other. Or alternatively, when we turn the engine off, we don't want the pumps spinning backwards because of the pressure in the system. So we make sure the fluid can only go one way. The pumps then tie into this relief valve. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, the pumps are always pushing fluid. That fluid always has to go somewhere. So what this valve does is, if the pressure exceeds its setting, which we've set to 2500 PSI, it will push fluid through this tree instead of allowing it to continue this way. Uh, so this relief valve makes sure that we're hitting our target pressure and dumping whatever extra flow we're not using. Um, it does mean that we're building an inefficient system. Efficient systems cost a lot more. So we're just going to make sure that A, we can switch pumps off that we're not using, and B, that we can deal with the heat that we're generating from using an inefficient system. So last week we talked a little bit about hydraulic accumulators. These are the two that we have. They're each one gallon accumulators. So the pressurized fluid comes from the pumps, it goes through our relief valve system, comes around here, and then feeds into these two giant accumulators. And again, like we mentioned last week, these two accumulators make sure that any pressure spikes or pressure drops in the system get accounted for. For electrical engineers, these are the equivalent of capacitors. Um, for everybody else, just think that, you know, as we sharply open or close valves, we need to take care of those impulses. These do that for us. So after the fluid goes into both accumulators, it comes out and goes to the rest of the robot. Uh, it then comes back in the reform, form of a return line, and that return line contains very hot oil. right? So it's just gone through all of our valves, it's gone through all of our pistons, it's coming back to us hot, we need to take that heat out of the oil, and that means we need an oil cooler. So, the first thing we did when we started designing this power unit is we took all of the parts out of a stock forklift. Uh, we took the engine, the yoke, and the pump out of a forklift. On top of that, we also took an oil cooler and radiator out of it. Problem is, forklifts don't work like Stompy works. Forklifts use their hydraulic systems maybe 10 to 20% of the time. And then when they're not using it, they're just kind of moving oil through their coolers. Uh, or the pumps just aren't spinning. Stompy doesn't do that. Stompy's moving oil all the time, and sometimes it's really hot and sometimes it's not. But it's always a lot of flow. So what we realized is that this unit, which is a combination engine radiator and oil cooler, wasn't going to do what we wanted it to do. If we're standing still, we are creating 70 horsepower worth of just heat that we're shoving into our hydraulic system. This isn't rated for that. So what we decided to do is get an oil cooler rated for about 60 horsepower worth of heat dissipation on its own. So this is gigantic. This can take flows up to 50 gallons per minute of just oil, and it takes 30 amps per fan and sucks all of that uh, heat out of the system using fins that you can see on the bottom here. Um, so we pass all of our fluid through this. We make sure that we are being intelligent with our pump selection by making sure we're either matching the number of pumps to the speed we're actually moving, or we're just turning the system off for standing still and relying on the valves to be closed. Um, hot fluid goes through this, it then comes out at this branch, and it goes through two return filters. The return filters, we, we split the branch because just one didn't have the flow capacity that we needed. So we're just going with a little bit of redund redundancy. But the filters make sure that you know, if there have been any cylinders that have scraped some metal off, um, or if there's just some dirt in a hydraulic system after we've repaired it, 
the filters make sure that doesn't get sucked into the pump, which is the easiest way to destroy these systems. So fluid comes into these filters, goes through here, comes back into the reservoir, and then gets ready to be cycled all over again back into the main.